Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about how to store fish. I get asked this question all the time from family and friends, and there's really only a few steps that you guys can take at home to help improve the quality and freshness. And throughout the video, I'll be using this paper roll to help me prep. So hopefully you guys learn something new and try it out for yourself. A lot of times when you're buying salmon at a large retailer like Costco or Sam's, it's sold by the filet. And when you get back home, you end up having to portion the fish to use it later in the week or freezing it. So let me show you guys a couple different ways you can prepare the fish for storage right after you bring it home. This is Maku paper. It's Japan's leading brand of paper used for wrapping fish and meat. It's made of 100% virgin fiber and according to the company, it does not contain any harmful chemicals so it's food safe. And it can be used for storing both fresh and frozen fish and it can also be used for other meats as well like steak or chicken. It does an excellent job at absorbing water and doesn't leave behind any fiber that may cling on to the meat like you would see in other brands. Here I have the filet with the skin removed already and I'm going to start off by drying off any excess moisture with the paper towel. Remember water is the enemy and we really want to keep this dry before storing it. Then I'm going to trim off any brown meat that may still be on there. Just not a big fan of this taste. Uh, it's totally fine to eat it, but it's something I would rather remove, especially if I'm going to be preparing sushi with it. Now, on the other hand, if you plan on pan firing this, you can leave the skin on. It adds a whole new element to the cooked fish and really enhances the overall taste in my opinion. Um, if possible, try to pick a piece that already has the scales removed. Next, I'm going to salt both sides evenly before cutting it down to smaller portions. And why the salt? Well, for two reasons. One, salt will help keep the bacteria level low. And second, it will also increase the umami flavor by pulling out some moisture. This is actually a common practice that sushi chefs do if they plan on carrying forward any leftover fish. Just note, this is an optional step, but if you plan on keeping fish in the fridge for a few days, this is highly recommended. The next step is to cut into your desired portions. You can try cutting into smaller pieces like 6 to 8 ounces, like the sake blocks you see here, or simply steak it. And once you got it cut, next is to wrap it in paper towel. And you'll see that I'm using two layers since these are thicker cuts. Now, if you're wrapping something like flounder where the meat is much thinner, you can probably get away with just using one sheet. And you can also do this with tuna. Here's a piece that was previously frozen and thawed overnight. You can see that there's quite a bit of drip coming out, and this is often the case when using frozen tuna. So you want to have some kind of substrate for absorbing all that moisture, instead of just having the fish sit in its own juice. Um, which is not going to be great to work with at the end. Here is another example. This red bite was wrapped with the maku paper and left to thaw in the fridge for a couple days. And you can see how much drip this paper picked up. The meat is dry to the touch and that's exactly what you're looking for. So back to the salmon. Once you have everything wrapped and placed on a plate, you're going to want to saran wrap this before putting it in the fridge. You could also poke some holes on the film to help the moisture escape, but I think the paper does a great job already. And if you started off with fresh salmon, this should not be a problem to keep in the fridge for several days until you're ready to cook. So this is three days later, and you can see the paper did a great job at absorbing all that moisture, top and bottom. And you can see that there is absolutely no drip whatsoever. And the end result is dry to the touch, almost tacky. And also, very important, there is no smell at all. Uh, this is exactly what you're looking for. This piece just needs a little bit of seasoning and it's ready for the frying pan. The missus will love this. Happy wife, happy life. Now, if you plan on freezing a fish, one method you can try is vacuum sealing. This will help prevent freezer burn and also makes it much cleaner to thaw in the fridge because you don't have to worry about the drip leaking out and getting on other stuff like vegetables or ready-to-eat food. For the fishermen out there, you can also do the same with whole fish if you want to age it for a few days to let the flavor develop before cooking. This is not the same for other seafood like crab or shrimp, those you want to eat as soon as possible since the quality diminishes rapidly on those type of seafood. But done properly with fish, it can really enhance the umami flavor and texture versus eating the fish on the day it was caught. But there are a few steps that should be taken. First, the fish should be scaled completely. Second. All the innards must be removed, including the gills because this holds a lot of blood and nutrients for bacteria to grow on. So try to spend extra time to take this out. I'm also going to cut along the center of the cavity to expose the kidney and blood. 
and then run it under cold water. And use the back of a spoon to slowly scrape this stuff out. This will help reduce the bacteria level and also prevent any smell while storing in the fridge. Once cleaned, I'm going to dry both sides and also try to get the cavity as much as possible. The less moisture in there, the better chance you'll have at minimizing bacteria growth. If there are any bits of innards left, use the paper to help pull it out. Again, just like the salmon, you can salt to improve the quality. You can also stuff paper inside the cavity to absorb the moisture that will come out later. Next is to wrap the entire fish with a couple of layers of paper, followed by plastic film. If aged properly in a fridge at very cold temperature, preferably below 41 degrees, this dehydration method helps extend the storage time and also improves the taste. If you're fishing and able to bleed out the fish immediately when it is caught, this will also improve the finished product. That's because any blood in meat cuts down the whole time. I think most people know that fish is a delicate protein that needs to be handled properly from the fisherman to the wholesaler to the retailer and finally to the customer. And it's very important that throughout this journey, the freshness is transferred along each channel. So always purchase from a reputable market that ensures this integrity. And if you're interested in purchasing the Maku paper rolls, please check out MTC Kitchen. They also carry a huge selection of Japanese kitchen tools and cutlery, pretty much anything you need to start making sushi at home, or if you want to pick up a specialty item for your restaurant. So I'll have the link down below, please check out their store. Okay guys, I hope this video has been helpful. Just remember that no matter how well you store fish, if you don't have fresh fish to begin with, then none of the steps will make it better. So start with knowing where to get fresh seafood and the rest is easy. And if you're a first time viewer and you like this kind of content, please subscribe for more and check out some of my other videos.